So, it's time I give my official gamer thoughts on what I thought of this episode. My my 7 out of 10 IGN review that everyone's going to agree with, and it would be tragic if anyone disagreed. So, <laughs> this is uh, a very, this is a high budget video, it's very low budget. Um, it's just the kind of thing I want to make after talking about an episode where I can be like, um, this is my thoughts on it, this is my unedited kind of opinion, and Anatomy Insanity, at least season 2 was a huge part of my childhood, um, I'm kind of sweating bullets right now, <laughs> it's so warm, um, it was a huge part of my childhood, you know, um, season 2 inspired the way I write in general, and was a big kind of pillar for like the standard of the OSC. Well, at least it felt like it in the time where a lot of people were like looking up to Anatomy Insanity. And season two kind of kept that, or season three, I should say, so kept that style. So when season two was announced to be continuing, I was a little frightened, but I also have a lot of faith in Animation Epic to have a high respect for their characters and a high level of, um, of quality kind of going in and I wasn't disappointed. Season 2 episode 15 felt like it just immediately hopped back into it. I, in an alternate timeline uh, where the season never stopped for like four years, you wouldn't see any difference in the writing. It's an improvement, yes, but it's not in a thing where you can tell there was a, ever a hyenas, like BFDIA. Oh, BFDIA. <laughs> so, I was I was really impressed with how they were able just to jump into the driving seat of uh, Season 2 style and, and continue it. And there's a lot of things that they kind of work on. Um, Taco is the main kind of focus of the episode. Wrapping up what she was really kind of planning to do the whole time. And it's very surprising to know that, yes, she was obviously trying to... Um, stop the con- or not stop the contest, but steal the, the money from the contest, but now it slowly turned into trying to save people from the contest. Uh, the challenges and the whole uh, show that Miphone, uh has made has become so detrimental to every contestant that has been in its mental health and well-being and Taco knows it well. Taco is at the bottom of the bucket for how much this show can hurt people. And it's really interesting to see her show honesty to the show, demand others do the same, almost kind of exposing them in some way, and pretty much beg people to leave. And it worked. Um, it worked for one character. Uh, it worked for Lightbulb. And Lightbulb is someone that I felt... I've got to make a video talking about this way more in depth at some point. But I felt like Lightbulb has pretty much played this game for other people her entire time. You know, she's uh, pretty much uh, became this kind of rock of humour and um, stability for a lot of characters that needed it. So she kind of did this for other people, and I feel like this was the first time she knew she didn't really want to compete anymore, but this was the first time she made a decision for herself, um, without worrying about whatever people think, and I think that's a really good way to wrap up a character that was so built on pleasing other people. Along with basketball, um, or baseball, I apologize, uh, baseball was a character that also felt like they did the same they were also trying to do it for other people yes they had more in a, a more in, uh, personal upset as incentive to um to actually win the game he wanted to win the game um but a lot of the decisions he made was this kind of idea that he was this leader this um like you know he, he wanted to keep everyone together so to be voted out by suitcase kind of felt a little poetic in a way not a nasty sense of revenge but a sense of this alliance never really existed and a lot of what he did in the idea of justice was just 
a way to twist whatever he did to kind of make it look like he was a better leader. Um, so a lot of these characters got really, really good endings. And to be honest, I think Knife and uh, Suitcase making the final two is the best. And I don't really care who wins. I like them both. So if Knife uh, or Suitcase win, I don't mind. To be honest, either is fine for me. So I'm actually totally on board with whatever happens. Um, of course, the episode is really well animated. They know how to work with these assets. They clearly have a more stable character reference sheet than BFDIA does. Um, these assets can look really ugly and uh, clip artish if they aren't treated well or at least um, kind of sized right or proportioned uh, consistently. And this show does it really, really well by making it look so pretty all the time. It, it's something that just kind of amazes me and how it how it does it um but oh man it, it's it's so insane to be back in they 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 never left that car driver's seat you know it, it, i can tell that they knew exactly what they were doing when coming back um and it, it felt like an amazing continuation and it's it's built my kind of trust in animation epics um, standard of writing that I have lost in Jack and Jellerfy. I know that a character is going to be treated with high respect every time they may be voted out more than kind of Jack and Jellerfy side of things. Um, and the music this episode, I think that solo from Taco was amazing absolutely incredible i i can't even get over the vocal diversity that that voice actor has or voice actress has she needs to be paid triple what she's already making <laughs> she needs to be like give her a fucking raise man that that vocal performance was like i had shivers listening to it you can kind of get that in my reaction where i'm almost like like gobsmacked British man uses the word gobsmack um, kind of level and oh, man it was really good just to be back um, and see that they kept the same sense of humour and same writing style that made season 2 so interesting Me Phone is a really interesting kind of case as well because I'm trying to figure out if it's kind of hinted at me phone almost froze time for these guys because they're acting like the four year difference didn't happen um and me phone is very um no oh, apologize me phone is kind of refusing to talk about it uh but he, he's made little things you know that little comments about off uh, vacation they've all been like you we were here yesterday which makes me think he's he's kind of frozen time for these assholes which is like so morbid that's horrible um and makes me like it puts a shadow on season three as well because he knew deep down he had all the time in the world to take a break and would he ever have went back if it wasn't for what happened in season three who knows he could have left these guys frozen forever he seems to be able to kind of push his problems aside very easily and being back in the season two environment has clearly almost not undone season three's kind of development but it's showing that this environment destroys his morality and pushes him to like just continuously like use the idea of drama in his show as a clutch for his own stability and it is or stability it is heart wrenching to watch um, because he's like these people are like outraged at him. They're 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 lashing out now. You know, suitcase lashed out at him, and he's like so focused mentally on making the show filled with drama that he's fine with that. You know, um, it's this environment isn't healthy for any of them. Uh, it, it, it twists people, it hurts people. Not a single person in this show, in season two, has walked away better than they've came in. 
and yes Mifun may have had that long vacation in season 3 but this environment itself shows to be powerful enough to hurt people that badly and I think that's what season 2 is trying to display especially with Taco begging people to leave is such an interesting kind of way to do it um but yeah, season two was genuinely a really, really good return of the show, and it's kind of boosted my trust in animation epics, respect for their characters and writing, something I'm missing a lot from a lot of BFDI episodes. Yeah, I think it was really, really good. I hope you like this kind of format, by the way. Uh, very, it's not like one of my big videos where I'm sitting outside talking about it, but it gives kind of an explanation of what I think of each episode. Um, and I'm not, like, worried about editing. I could just pump this out and I can work on my other videos I'm actually really excited about, like, um, audio editing and BFDI and Warrior Cat stuff and more of kind of outside object couch videos, because this isn't an object couch video. Um, this is kind of just uh, my thoughts on, maybe it's a whole new series, who knows, but yeah, thank you for watching.